Fallout London is an upcoming mod for Fallout 4 that will allow Wii the player to experience the Fallout world in a setting outside of post-war America. Having been a fan of the series for many years now, I've always wondered what a Fallout game set in another country would look like, so I'm incredibly excited to see what will be in store and how it'll all pan out. From the quarterly progress videos to official gameplay trailers, we've been given a peek into the project that honestly appears more comparable to a Fallout 4 DLC than a simple mod. For me personally, I'm very keen to get into the experience of not only a new setting and take on the Fallout universe, but to be able to interact with brand new factions and groups that'll appear within London. And so today's video, we'll be taking a look at these very factions. Seven have been identified so far. The Gentry, the Tommies, Camelot, the Fifth Column, the Isle of Dog Syndicate, the Vagabond, and Angel, with the last five being joinable in-game. Before I begin, I'd like to thank the team at Fallout London for reaching out, and if this is the first you've heard about the mod, I've included a link below to check out their channel for more information and updates. Please do note that the information of this video may be subject to change, given that the mod is still in development. Starting off, we have the Gentry. The Gentry are no doubt one of the most important factions of the game, with nearly each of the other groups either somewhat aligned or actively opposed to them. Described as being the current rulers of London, the Gentry form from the descendants of the pre-war aristocracy and government that was able to survive intact for over 200 years. This longevity does appear to have given their right to rule a degree of legitimacy, as they could be seen to be simply the continuation of the monarchy that had ruled London for centuries. This is further emphasised by the locations they inhabit, including landmarks such as Big Ben, and the fact that their headquarters is within Westminster, which appears to be guarded by Queen's Guardsmen. Much like their pre-war counterpart, Queen's Guardsmen are outfitted with high-caliber weaponry and can even be seen on horseback, most notably their ghouls, thereby potentially not being the descendants of pre-war Queen's Guardsmen, but the very same Queen Guardsmen themselves. And it might not just be they who survived the Great War, in what might be the single greatest feature of Fallout London, Queen Elizabeth II may potentially be making an appearance. Concept art shows Her Majesty, or at least another British monarch of similar persuasion, to be alive and well. This queen does undoubtedly appear to have embraced the chaos of the post-war world. The hands of another person are seen dangling from her neck like jewellery. Her clothing is tattered and covered in blood, and her eyes are legitimate nightmare fuel. One concept art displays the Queen as a creepy but undeniably human, accompanied by two of her corgis, who seem to be far more bloodthirsty than usual. The other depicts Her Majesty looking more akin to a ghoul, which may suggest how she's still running London at this point in time. That being said, Queen Elizabeth was born in 1926, with the Great War itself taking place in 2077, making her at least 151 years of age when the world would have ended. She definitely has good genes, but I don't think they're that good. That being said, it may just be that the Queen of our universe and the one of Fallout are the same, just born at different time periods. Mr. Handy Robots can be heard yelling out for Queen and Country, which would suggest that the United Kingdom had a ruling Queen, and this may be the same one. The Queen, however, might not be the only member of the royal family to still be kicking on, emphasised by the other concept art titled as The Prince of Wales. That's right. Charles is still waiting to be king. Similar to the Queen, the Prince of Wales also appears to be ghoulified, leading some credence to the ability for the House of Windsor to survive relatively intact over the 200-year period. The leadership of the gentry is said to be an imitation of democracy, but in truth, it's a feudal, aristocratic hegemony. I frankly don't quite know if the two were created just as a concept art or if they will appear in game as leaders in some form or another, but I love the fact that they were even considered. Ultimately, the Gentry are seen as one of the most powerful factions within Fallout London. They are the nominal rulers of London, with grand plans to recreate the United Kingdom into the shining example of civilization that it once was. However, these aspirations could be seen as lofty at best, as they are described to have a rather loose grasp of control on the city. As although their rule is described as being strict, it appears that different groups simply have to pay homage to them as overlords, paying tithes of tribute in exchange for defense and aid, rather than being directly controlled by the gentry themselves. Up next are the Tommies. The Tommies are another faction that are categorically separate but technically aligned with the gentry. I'd compare the Tommies to the Minutemen in the fact that they are a militia army formed to protect the people of London. 
Originally forming out of a benevolent idea of doing good, the Tommies are stated to have had their key mission slowly unraveled due to their connections to the gentry, as although they protect the walls, landmarks and people of London, the gentry ultimately profit the most from this with very little thanks or appreciation given in return. Tommy troops stationed themselves in areas such as the London Eye or St Paul's Cathedral, defending these locations with their lives while the gentry conserves their own power base. The Tommies have been described as having the appearance of a retro-futurized Great War soldier. Footage seen gives an eerie similarity to the First World War as they wander through the trenches. They are essentially honest men and women, fighting to protect their fellow countrymen despite the incompetence of their higher-ups. The Tommies are described not as necessarily having a direct leadership or chain of command, yet from an administrative level, the group is organized by General Asquith. Described to be an armchair commander, General Asquith is either willingly compliant or blissfully unaware that the Tommies are being utilized as mere tools to protect and project the power of the gentry. Never being seen on the front lines, Asquith gives the impression of a man who loves the prestige of appearing to be a leader, while possessing none of the skills to earn such a position. Most interestingly, the Tommies are indicated to potentially hold the future of London within their hands, but first, and potentially with the help of the player, they must decide what that future may be. Given that the militia appears to be the most numerous and well-armed faction, it appears likely that their strength might be able to be directed to support a path that best aligns with the playstyle of we, the player. Now, Camelot. Camelot may just be the faction I'm most excited for. I remember seeing them in the official release trailer and being hyped as hell to see knights in shining armor battling it out with wasteland creatures. Camelot is stated to be an underground organization seeking to bring a revolution to London. They'd once sought to peacefully accomplish their aims of bringing a representative democracy to London. However, the autocratic rulers of the gentry found this to be a direct threat to their power and enacted violent crackdowns on the movement. Camelot is therefore bitterly opposed to the gentry and seeks only to overthrow their rule and establish a new republican government to London. Camelot is led, as it once was by Arthur, a tough, rugged leader who seeks to claim London for the order. Interestingly, it does appear another historical character from the days of yore might be joining Arthur in his noble quest, Merlin. Although obviously not being a wizard, Merlin seems to be a wise and ghoul who no doubt would bring decades, potentially centuries of experience in supporting Arthur to unite the people of London. The last notable face of the Camelot movement is John Rigby, who appears to be everything Arthur is not, he's pudgy and strange. John appears to fill a more quartermaster role, providing help and support to the knightly order. Camelot is said to draw inspiration from British World War II commandos, which can definitely be seen in the concept art images of Arthur and Merlin. However, they obviously have a large basis drawn from the Camelot of yore, which I personally find to be the coolest thing. Aesthetically, I love the theme. I personally like the design of Fallout 4's power armor and did enjoy the concept that it's not simply just armor you wear, but more like a vehicle that you pilot. However, I did find Fallout 4 a little limiting in that there seemed to be light armor, medium armor, with the next step being power armor. I would have enjoyed the concept of wearing heavy armor without it affecting your ability to operate certain tasks, which I feel the knight armor of Camelot will accomplish. And goddamn, it just looks cool. It's like how the Brotherhood subtly draws inspiration from knightly orders of old, whereas Camelot just unashamedly said, yeah, this is what we are. All I can say is I'm very excited to fight for the day where the disenfranchised of London have a seat at the round table. The Fifth Column are an organisation who, like Camelot, are categorically opposed to the gentry and their rule of London. A populist movement, the Fifth Column seeks to recruit largely from the poor and disenfranchised people of London, with their recruiting grounds found in areas such as the London Borough of Tower Hamlets. The Fifth Column has gained much in popularity with the lower orders of the city, those who feel they've been left behind or taken advantage of admire the fifth column's ability to sneer at the influence of the gentry. The fifth column promises to bring down the current established rule and rebuild a new empire from the ashes left behind. But those with nothing to lose and everything to gain, such a proposition is enticing indeed. The fifth column are led by a woman named Eve Varney, who appears to be the beating heart of the organization itself. Indeed, it could almost be described as the most dynamic cult of personality found on this side of the Atlantic Ocean. The world, it is said, is needed to be burned down and rebuilt in her very image. Only by emulating Eve and the unknown founder of the fifth column can Britain be reborn. 
The Isle of Dog Syndicate are a criminal organisation who trace their lineage to pre-war London gangs. As professional criminals, the Syndicate is known to utilise violence, intimidation and even murder in their bid to retain power. The Syndicate is located in the East London Borough of Millwall, as well as their headquarters in One Canada Way. From these locations, they operate one of the largest scavenging operations in London and typically service merchants to outside factions, which has allowed them to become incredibly wealthy. However, this wealth is checked by the fact that the gentry in Westminster take their own cut from the Syndicate's profits, causing a large degree of resentment to breed against their aristocratic overseers. So much so, in fact, that the Isle of Dog Syndicate would be open to a change of management, should such an occasion arise. For the time being, the Isle of Dog Syndicate is locked in conflict with a rival gang, the Vagabonds. Such a conflict has escalated immensely in recent times, after the murder of the Vagabonds' previous leader. As mentioned earlier, the Vagabonds are a rival gang locked in conflict with the Isle of Dog Syndicate. Said to draw inspiration from pre-war British gangs similar to the Peaky Blinders, the Vagabonds had originally wished to be what the Isle of Dog Syndicate is now. The top dogs, you might even say. However, they had originally wished to hold a more even spread of power within the gang, with less of a focus on violent intimidation. Unfortunately, following the death of their former leader to the Isle of Dog Syndicate, the Vagabonds are motivated purely by one desire, revenge. The Vagabonds are now led by Sebastian Gaunt, a man with a good heart who wants the best for his gang, who was held back by his own harsh manner. Members of his own gang have even thought about betraying him just to shut him up. Another identified vagabond is Chill Winston, a companion who was stated to be helpful in a fight, but primarily just tries to keep the angry and abrasive Sebastian calm. The two are apparently inside Angel's lab at the opening sequence of the game. Sebastian, Chill, and another vagabond named Johnny can be heard arguing over the attempt to restart the elevator before spotting the player character through the security cameras. It's unknown what had led them to head into the Angel lab, or how they even found it in the first place, but it probably does speak loads to their tenaciousness, especially since most of London either fears or does not even believe in Angel. The final faction is the most elusive of them all, Angel. Only spoken of in whispers through the boroughs of London, Angel was an organisation shrouded in mystery and intrigue. While some deny their very existence, believing them to merely be a boogeyman for the ignorant, Others believe that they're the post-war descendants of the Deep Science Ministry of the former British government, with eyes and ears all over the city monitoring its inhabitants. Angel definitely does exist, as they're the main faction seen in the opening sequence of the mod. The player character awakens, submerged within a tube, while being observed by two Angel scientists. Having been deemed their best work yet, it's evident that the character has either been created by the organisation itself, or at the very least conditioned by them. And it's within this opening sequence that we're introduced to Mr. Smythe, the head of the program. Smythe is as elusive as the organisation he runs. His demeanour is that of an upper class gentleman, something largely unseen in a post apocalyptic world. He evidently has spent a deal of time and resources in the subterranean lab, yet seems unfazed as it's blown to pieces. And although he's extremely interested in the player while he's in the tube at the start of the opening sequence, he is decidedly uninterested when the player decides to flee the compound. It's hard to predict if Smythe willingly allows the player to leave the lair as some part of an unseen plan, or if he genuinely is uninterested in what happens to them. Ultimately, Angel and Mr. Smythe can be categorised by the fact that no one knows that much about them, and those that do believe that they are actually the ones who truly run London. Fortunately for Angel, those that do know, don't say, and those that don't know, can't say which is how they prefer it. And that is all the factions that have been identified so far in Fallout London. There may be more information released on them within the coming months as more and more progress videos are released. In fact, this video might become a bit outdated. Nevertheless, I hope it piqued your interest in this upcoming amazing mod even further. I know we all can't wait to try it out. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.